In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint the brand new Striking Scorpions from Kill Team Salvation. A huge thank you to Games Workshop for sending this out for free ahead of time so that I can create some content. It's time to get green. Let's get painting. So I've primed all the miniatures green and the spray that I've used is Salamander Green from Colorforge. Now don't worry if you can't get this where you are. Any sort of green spray that roughly resembles this will work. If it's slightly darker, such as Orc Skin from Army Painter, that's absolutely fine because we are going to add a little bit of a dry brush on later that'll bring that Warpstone Glow colour back. The first thing I'm going to do is cover all of the models with Null Oil. So I'm using the new formulation of Null Oil which will flow into those recesses. The one key thing I'll say here is just make sure it doesn't pool too heavily in any one spot. So maybe work uh, limb by limb across all of the models, just working it into those recesses because that's what's going to give us our first shade. While we're waiting for that Null Oil to dry, I'd really appreciate a like and if you feel up to it a comment in the description it really helps more people see the video and if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button well that's completely dry we're then going to dry brush the models with some warpstone glow now i'm using a very soft large makeup brush for this so it's got a lot of paint i've wiped most of it off but it's not necessarily a dry brush per se and when i paint the model i'm going to flick this in a downward motion so we're pulling the paint down which is going to leave the darker colors in those recesses but just brighten up some of those armor panels and of course we'll brighten them up much more later on. Next up I'm going to paint in all of the black elements. Now I'm using AK black, you can use whatever black you prefer such as a bad and black and essentially what I'm looking for are things like the weapons, the chainsword covering, the face masks and also any additional decorative elements that are on the models. Now, there's barely any silver on these Striking Scorpions, so there's no need to go wild with it. So all I'm doing is taking Surcoat Silver, and I'm using this kind of like a highlight over those black undercoats. So for the links on the chain blade, and also for some of the clips on the belt, all I'm doing is highlighting them with the Surcoat Silver. So I'm not going too wild. Now, any mistakes I make, I can just paint over with black. There are, however, quite a few gold elements. So the colour I'm going to use to base all of those is Dragon's Gold from two thin coats. Now, I put this on a little bit too heavily in some places, I did obscure some detail. So just take your time, thin it down with a touch of water, not too much, and you won't have the same mistake that I ran into in some places. I then shaded all the gold using Reichland Flesh Shade. Again, this is the new formula of the shade, so it does flow into those recesses a little bit better. Again, very similar to when we used Nylon Oil earlier. We don't want it to pool too heavily in any one place. So just take care as it starts to dry. While we're waiting for that right and flesh shade to dry, I just want to let you know that you can see a full box review of the Kill Team Salvation, that's the Scouts and the Striker Scorpions on my Patreon. It's completely free. The link is in the description for this video. Once we're dry, it's time to highlight, and the colour I'm going to use is Glistening Gold from Two Thin Coats. Now, if you don't have this or you don't have Dragon's Gold, you can use Retributor Armour and Liberator Gold to highlight. All we're doing is looking for those parts of the gold that are going to catch the most light, so generally the ones that are facing upwards. I'm going to base all of the leather next, and the colour I'm going to use for that is Dryad Bark, which is a nice desaturated dark brown colour. So just take your time around those bits you've already finished and painting all the straps and holsters. When that's dry, I am going to give it a little bit of a wash with some Null Oil, just to add a little bit more shadow to it. This is a nice easy step, just don't overload those areas, because you don't want to spill it on the green. Finally, we'll highlight the leather with some Gawthor Brown. So, again, this is a nice light desaturated brown, and all I'm looking to do is drag this along any sharp edges that I've got for a nice crisp highlight. And where I don't have that, I just want to put a nice controlled line. So this is where that, that sharp tip on your brush really comes in handy. It's time to start highlighting the black now, and the colour I'm going to use that is Dark Reaper, which is a very nice bluey, grey, dark, purpley kind of colour. And the reason I like this so much is that once it dries, it blends down very nicely into the black. So in general, what we're looking to do is catch all those sharp edges, pull the brush along them to get nice crisp highlights. Really important, again, that you don't have too much on your brush because otherwise you're just going to accidentally spill it into places you don't want it. That said, you can very easily paint over this with black. So if you do go a little bit awry, and you are a bit blotchy, then you can fix it really easily. The next highlight colour we'll use on the black is Thunderhawk Blue, which is a great complement to the Dark Reaper that's already on there. And this, once it dries, will also blend in quite nicely. Essentially, what we're doing is exactly the same thing as the previous step with the Dark Reaper, except we're looking to just paint this inside of the Dark Reaper so that you get a nice, crisper highlight and a bit of a 
progression from the darker color to the lighter highlights. So we're just going to drag the brush along all those sharp edges, taking our time to make sure we don't have too much on the tip. Finally, just for those really sharp edges, we're going to take some Fenrisian gray. So we're really only focusing on things like the edges of the chainsaw and the pistol here, as well as any sharp black objects, not so much the material on the striking scorpions. And we're using this very, very sparingly because it is a very bright color. So we just want to use it to accent those really, really sharp, hard edges. We'll paint all of the gems next. And the first thing to do is to base them all white. And the color I use for this is Bold Titanium White from Procrail. Use whatever white you prefer. The important thing here is that you just keep it inside the lines and don't spill out onto the gold parts. For all of the blue gems, I'm going to use Frost Hard Contrast Paint. And this is just as simple as painting it over the white we've just put down. Take your time with this, make sure you don't spill it anywhere. And if you want to add some definition, you can add a second coat in the bottom corner if you want. For all of the purpley pink gems, I'm going to use Sigval Burgundy. And this is exactly the same concept as with the Frost Heart previously. I'm then going to use Baal Red to paint any red gems, targeters, and also the eyes of the models. The striking scorpions are also covered in yellow chevrons. So we'll do these next, and this is fairly straightforward. The first thing we want to do is get some Avalanche Sunset. Not too much on your brush, you make sure you've got a good tip. And what we're going to do is we're basically just going to paint over all of those chevrons. Now they are pronounced, so it is easy to paint them. If you do make any mistakes, paint over it with some Warpstone Glow. However, it should be fairly straightforward to get this Avalanche Sunset base down. You may need two coats in some areas. Now, of course, the Avalanche Sunset is quite a dark and desaturated yellow. We want these to pop. So the color I'm going to take next is Phalanx Yellow. And all I'm going to do is paint this over the Avalanche Sunset from the previous stage. Now, you should get away with just one coat here. And this is really going to make those chevrons pop. As you see in the video, they do start to come alive. So just take your time. Also, there's lots of other yellow elements dotted around the model. So we've got beads on some of the decorative elements. Uh, and on the on plume from the helmet as well. So just tap those with the phalanx yellow. And if you're not sure, just check the box art or the web store art. All right, it's time to highlight all of the green armor. So the first thing we're going to do is take a 50 50 mix of moot green and warpstone glow. And we're essentially going to paint this over the majority of the armor on the model. Generally, this will cover okay in one coat, but if you do need to put a second one on, that's okay. And this is really going to brighten up the armor. We're looking to leave that warpstone glow in the recesses, and we're looking to leave the darker, null and oil covered warpstone glow in the really deepest recesses. So, as you work your way around the model, just build it up thinking about those edges that are going to catch the majority of the light. See, the model is starting to look a lot brighter now. So, the next step is to put a nice thick edge highlight on of pure moot green. Now, because we've got that 50 50 mix of moot green and warpstone glow in the previous step, this is going to be a little bit more subtle than if it was just pure moot green on top of warpstone glow. So what we're looking to do is capture all of the edges on the model. We don't want to do this super thin, but we don't want it to be super thick. So just generally a normal kind of edge highlight. And we're going to work our way all over the model, catching all of those sharp edges. The last highlight we're going to put on the model is a mix of phalanx yellow and moot green. It's probably two parts moot green to one part phalanx yellow because this is going to give you a very, very nice chartreuse color. I've always wanted to say that. And what we're looking to do is put the extreme edge highlights on with this mix. So all we're doing is making sure we've got a little bit on our brush and just catching those really, really sharp edges. There we have it. These striking scorpions are ready for the tabletop. Again, a huge thank you to Games Workshop for sending me this for free so I could create the content. Don't forget, you can see a full review of the Kill Team Salvation Box in my Patreon link in the description. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and a comment, and I will see you next time.